it's funny because uh, being an artist you learn that you embody and employ and empower oneself using different methods of mentalities and perceptions and attitudes and multiple kinds of egos to achieve a finished product, so to speak you know, successfully. Um, and this comes with stepping outside of oneself. Um, that's where the embodiment comes in. And I do believe that there's a certain level of spiritual and soulful channeling that goes on. And uh, in my experiences growing up, so many people have judged me um, and people have hired me and paid me good money uh, at a seemingly risk to themselves for what I was about to engage in, which is going up to a brand new finished and painted wall, even in someone's living room and just open up cans of paint or even a brand new car or a, somebody's custom painted hot rod or exotic car and just like take a paintbrush to it, you know? And they've trusted me and that comes with a sense of judgment. Um, I guess judgment and trust could be kind of one and the same, but I've had to contrast, you know, I'm gonna talk about bipolar things, you know, but to trust somebody and judge them and then question them, you know, uh, along the lines is like, if I'm high, if I am on drugs, you know, what do you consider drugs? Um, you know, if I have a, something's wrong, you know, or if, you know, I am dysfunctional, uh, you know, responsible, and uh, for the most part, that judgment has been a stigma, you know, almost like starving artists or artists, artists are all wacky and we can't handle life. In some respects, it's true, but, you know, to someone that works at nine to five, giving a, choosing a choice out of the choices given to them, limiting, are they any more functional because they appear to be living a, a routine with structure, whether dependable or not? And that's a lot of the older generation just falls into that category of a hypocritical judgment. And what I noticed about is young people is a kid asked me if I have ADHD or if I'm OCD. And like, it's funny because I just, it triggered me to think rather than triggering me to act on being defensive. And when Bob Molly said the youth is gonna be strong, in contrast to people saying the youth are stupid, they don't know nothing, they're careless. There's so much power involved with a person that comes from a point of knowledge that the responsibility of knowledge then needs to be addressed. So I guess the, the reason for this video, and I'm gonna title it, you know, accordingly, but I've never been diagnosed professionally other than outside of a professional setting from people that have had experience in a, in a psychological training way or a medical training way. You know, I've been given many labels. I've been given many assessments. Some good, some bad. Um, but for the most part, I've been able to survive and get through it. And I have taken quite a loss because of those judgments. And, you know, I've been cut out of opportunity. I've been cut out of so many things. I don't want to play a victim because until you're dead, 
you're not a victim because that's why we don't just dismiss things and say, oh, you got to forget about it and move on. Because once you do that, you establish yourself as someone who was a victim of the past, which never really goes away. You know, that's why I don't drop the law thing. Um, if you see any of my other videos. But for the kid who I think he's 17, you know, to, to ask me that question. And uh, it made me think and it made me feel kind of good because of the awareness. And it made me feel like this promise in the younger generations more than the older generations. You know, because as the kids grow up, they're going to make places in the world for not only themselves, but for people like me. And, and uh, that's a better place than what the older generations have offered. Because if you don't fall in the line, you're not accepted with the old people. And they'll, they'll take from you and they'll rip you off. Like, okay, you know, he's, he could be diagnosed and I have a business and I hired him. So now I get to fuck him and rip him off because, you know, he's less than me. And I judged him, you know, without a, a card from a doctor saying that I have, you know, mental capabilities and perspectives beyond that of artificial intelligence. <laughs> Believe me, fuck bag. You know, it's like, oh, I don't have to pay him now because, you know, he's lucky to have a job. And that's never been the case. And, you know, my level of confidence comes out with people that I'm not working for or don't have any needs or interests along the lines of us doing business and them acquiring something from me. So then I've been judged as someone with a, you know, as, even to the point of being an asshole because I'm confident and they don't like that because my confidence supersedes their lies. <laughs> so it's like, it's just a crazy situation. And each day that I, I am gifted life with the breath of life and, and a body of abilities that I respect and have cared for to keep myself healthy and functional functioning and um, you know it, it's just like such a uh, an amazing life of promise you know there's always the glass half full for me and um, you know and what else is funny is the kid said after speaking with the kid and thinking about it myself and letting him in on the knowledge that I'm thinking about it you know uh, he says yeah because if somebody has OCD, they're going to clean up stuff just by being around, <laughs> which is true because I don't want to be in an environment, you know, that's mechanically disheveled because, you know, when you work, you can't always clean at the same time. I respect that. So sometimes businesses and people, uh, they don't have the resources or the, the personnel to just stay organized. So I organize as I go. Like a lot of people on their desks at work, they'll, or even at home on their kitchen counter, they'll have tools, they'll have recreational stuff, they'll have actually kitchen stuff. Plus they don't clean, you know, half the time. And oh, I'm so busy and I got all these things. Well, you know what, you're not a king or queen and you don't have an entourage, so you gotta clean up after yourself. But when somebody like me comes around, I can't see sometimes based on the distractions of disorganization. So I will clean the environment that I'm working in and I relate it to integrity, not having anything to do with the integrity of the people that I'm working for or around their business. But, you know, I see these things and, and that is a more dysfunctional <laughs> life than what has been uh, the venue of the judgment that comes across to me. In many cases uh, where I'm at now I don't judge and I don't have to because I know the people's hearts and I know the people's lives and I know that if there's any disorganization it's just because there's, there's a lot to handle and um, you know like I said personnel and finances come in, in step in the way sometimes and when everybody else has houses and businesses and, and an overhead you know I really I respect that. It's not easy. And, you know, being sterile myself, too. I've never had dependence. And it's sad, too, because I'm 48 and I see 
you know, some women and they're like, oh, I wish I had a family and I'm 40 now and I'm old. Well, you know, I can understand where you're coming from, but you gotta, you gotta embody where you're at and what your situation is. I feel bad every day because I don't have things like a family. And the feelings like to be proud of somebody else's kid, kid and say, you know what, I've, you know, I love that kid because I see myself in there and if I had a son or daughter, I would want, I would be proud that they're my son and daughter, you know? So at this point of life, it's, it's just a crazy reality. And, you know, to think about them subjects while I'm working, you know, it could be considered, oh, you know, OCD because I got, or, or, you know, whatever, bipolar, you know, autism, Asperger's, uh, narcissism, you know, histrionic, sociopath, psychopath, um, you know, like uh, all these things come into play. And, you know, and I've lived a life as a child and as an adult, and I, I keep my child, child ways because, you know, I never had to put them aside because of not having independence. So I'm able to embody that. And while I need to do stuff for kids, like a children's book that I'm illustrating on the side right now, um, it happens to be about adult themes with how love can hurt you, you know. I believe that children should be able to grow up without thinking about you know, adult themes to at least a point of like 16, you know, and not think about getting laid or, or having money to work a job. You know, they should know about those things existing in the world, but not the details because those details replace other thoughts and yearnings and aspirations and passions that people strive for to have careers they are committed to and build themselves as a person, you know, and a member of society that contributes and you could bring something new to the table or, you know, upgrade and make proud of the things and people that are involved already, you know, because there's a lot of dysfunction and a lot of parents had to put themselves aside because, you know, they were having fun that, you know, people like me miss out on and, you know, regret later. And then, you know, later on, those people regret that they they grew up too early. So they're they're dysfunctional within themselves. And a lot of them take on habits and vices um, that are not healthy and actually can degrade not only their own life, but the life of other people, too. I mean, why else would it would a 78-year-old man need a 41-year-old or 46-year-old woman? You know, and here I am, 48. You know, why would a 75-year-old man need a 25-year-old woman? And, you know, for that 25-year-old woman who's now a woman and not a girl anymore, you know, that they're not going to get married and have kids and do all those things because they're playing and they've learned a different way. I made a video on uh, hypergamy you know um so it's like i know about life yet i have not experienced a lot about life but my experiences are more than what most people's lives can be experiencing i think and uh it leads me to have the feeling that i have a better perspective on certain things like politics and and human relation because i can see this and, I, and I'm capable of thinking about multiple things at once. Or at the same time, you know. And uh, there was a man named Oakley Hall that I saw a documentary about. And it was really, it was awesome because he described his functioning aspects as all these thoughts and ideas rush to the point and forefront of his focus at once. And he has to, anxiety because he has to choose what to let out depending on the situation he's in, instead of like, you know, accepting all the thoughts and being distracted, which is very hard, you know. Um, so, and what happened to him is, you know, he created one of the, the biggest, most like basic startup theater companies in upstate New York that is responsible for a lot of culture today. Um, and. He always wanted to know what it was like to experience life from the outside and, vi and envision the, you know, that perspective on appreciating and enjoying the work that people like 
him and I and so many others, you know, uh, Robin Williams comes to mind, you know, as an example, like, I don't know what it's like to sit and watch a movie and, and be entertained because I think of the, the, the mechanical part, but I can in certain respects and I would never want to wish it away because I feel it's a gift and I made a promise a long time ago because art and that perception had saved me. So I asked God, I, I made a promise that if I could continue to receive and channel all this ability and skill and perception to be creative, which is I feel like I could create the earth. <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets celestial. That I would not lie, cheat, or steal, or hurt people, and you know, and uh, God delivers, and and not to let me be exposed to certain evils, which I have been exposed, um, but I've been saved, so, you know, plucked from, you know, and I've suffered. I've sat in jail uh, with murderers and stuff, and. I never had a doubt or a sense of insecurity that I was going to be hurt because I can't be hurt because I am more than this physical realm. And, um, and you know, it, it's such a great existence. And if other people could understand that in context, not in the detail that they will see through my eyes and feel through my feelings, but they have that themselves and it comes with a promise. and. It, and that promise allows you to omit and, and discard desperation uh, in a lot of ways, you know. And my life has been broken down to the point where I was homeless and running from the law all of a sudden. You never having done anything in my life. You know, the law is coming to my house looking for me because knowledge is more powerful than a weapon, believe me. And, a, and, a, and dangerous in the wrong hands and if you're an evil doer it's especially dangerous because you know I go with the truth and the truth has set me free and the truth always wins in the end um, so get, getting back on the original subject to be judged by the past generations and convicted and offended from past generations by generations generations of the past it's such a blessing to to be able to experience the the parallel universe and and know that exists at the same time and you know to have that kid ask me a question while he sees my method of madness because at one point you know I could I could appear and and I could present myself as a businessman you know as an artist and nobody if they don't know about artists, they don't see what the reality is. They just see the product and they see the people selling the product. But once you start to work, that breaks away that professional, constructed, routine, structured person breaks away. And then something else appears. And that's why I go blind and I don't really see what I'm doing. I don't know how I'm doing what I'm doing. It just happens. And at the end, I do get to sit back and say, holy fuck, I just made that in like five or six hours. And it's like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm living the dream. And uh, the dream is living through me. And um, it's a great experience, this life. And, you know, just like somebody works, I guess, in, in a smaller perspective, if somebody spends 30 years working, nine to five, 40 hours a week, eight hours a day, and dismisses themselves at the end of 40 years or 30 years, they're like, holy shit, dude, I have a house and businesses and I paid for it with all with cash at a sacrifice. And I have a family and I have, you know, vehicles and, and you know, and I, and I have the power of money with a bank account with six, seven, eight figures in it. You know, I, I know what that feels like without having to feel that. Um, on a different level and I don't need that to survive and some of these people that get to that point they realize that they didn't need that to survive either or don't and they just 
you know, embodied something else because of that creation. And for my five hour timeline where I become out exhausted, but then I have a whole finished project where I sculpted something or painted a wall or constructed something or designed something, even on paper, you know, that would take 20 people to do over the course of years. They, they have the same thing on a, on a 30 year timeline and then their body's gone. <laughs> You know, and I don't laugh to be sinister about it. I laugh because life is a comic tragedy. <laughs> it really is. Um, and I've tattooed the, the, the smiling and uh, laughing and an angry face on people. I can't tell you how many times I've drawn that picture and tattooed it. I've painted it. I've drawn drawings of it. And, and to, to understand where the origin of these ideas comes from is a lot more complicated than just like, oh yeah, man, uh, you know, I had this thought one day. <laughs> you know, those designs and those images are based on lives sometimes at the cost of people's lives. You know, whether their own or whether that people saw someone die and then create that, you know, so there's so much depth in life uh, as well as there's so much of a shallow shell uh, that people see. And uh, I guess the point of this video is to say that there's promise. There's promise for my people. My Everybody is my people. Um, but there's promise for my kind of person. My kind of personality and my kind of existence in the future. Uh, even though AI is, could replace people. You know, on, a, on another level, photographers are a, are a breed of their own. Really, they are. <laughs> You'd be surprised once you get to sit down and talk with some real photographers that, like, I'm just gonna mention Ansel Adams. I have a, a good friend of mine, you know, uh, Jim Harris. He's a great photographer. Uh, and now he's learned and encompassed the digital realm way long ago at the start because he saw it as a tool but you know originally I went to his studio and I took a I, I paid twenty dollars to have a professional picture taken of a of an airbrush picture that I made of, of the RZA from the Wu-Tang you know another genius you know say what you want these people are fucking smart dude they've created empires and you know like but for Mr. Jim Harris I learned about photography and I, I met many other photographers in between and you know he's a good man he's got a, a good heart but to know that your digital camera can do their job just like you know instaprint you know and your your pc paintbrush um, you're i'm dating myself you know can do my job in a sense of coloring and rendering and sizing and manipulating images and everything you know uh, it doesn't replace us, and that's why AI will always be inferior. I have this thing, you know, and my John Henry is one of my favorite stories, by the way, if you don't know about that either. And so is Lucas is one of my favorite movies, so you should get to watch that. Uh, and Minority Report is a really good movie, too. You know, all these things are pieces of information that will, will build a circumstance and tell a story about life and where we're at and where we could be and where we come from and uh, what is out there and what could be, you know, um, put out there. It's, it's a big circle and it's an evolutionary um, merry-go-round, if you will, um, of building up and breaking down and building up and breaking down this life. And uh, I feel positive for the future. Um, and I think that the more people like myself are able to have a voice through technology and that technology is speaking for people like me and making people aware of the different kinds of personalities you know we have the potential to really really come out good in this world no matter what country you're in no matter what your government is like because you know there's a lot of people in government that are old school but they have kids and family that have a, a new kind of existence that's that I'm speaking of that's coming out so uh, you just might be surprised you know it all takes is a flip of a switch to turn a light on and and light up a shopping mall you know and if you, if the shopping mall was completely dark and all the doors to stores were open you'll get killed walking around in there you know there's so much there's a, there's a whole world and, and you know it's another example analogy as a creative artist you know, there's a whole world inside that shopping mall, 
that you don't have to go outside to exist. It's like its own planet, you know. But if it was in the dark, like I said, you'll get killed. You're not just going to walk into a mattress store after, you know, going through a kiosk with food and lie on a bed and just be comfortable for the rest of your life, you know. Once the light's on, you see so much more. So we're not in the dark ages anymore. And the people that are like me that are related to other people that are in positions of power and government and influence and control, you know, um, it's, it's real easy to step into that. And then once you employ love, too, because if a woman could topple an empire, yet they haven't been able to hold one down and control one and keep a circumstance, you know, just think about the circumstance of how love could be. You know, a queen's love for a man and a, man, a king's love for a queen, you know, that can change the reality of the rulership. And I think that um, as people pass away from past generations, there's a good chance that the the ones who inherited their positions of power in either political or social or, or corporate empires will be able to um, utilize the knowledge that we have today to suit everybody else and not be so tyrannic and dictating, you know, and um, take the qualified immunity away from those that do rape and pillage and stuff like pirates that a lot of empires were built on because of ignorance and dysfunction and profiling and judgment of past generations leading us right back to where I started. So um, it was really refreshing and um, I don't think that it's fair to label Generation Z and Millennials, and I've always said this as dysfunctional because who, who brought them up to be like that in a world, you know? The family unit is extremely important. Um, and a family unit that exists without too much religious or ethnical or racial structure is the family unit that's going to survive. Um, unfortunately, my family unit is not like that. It's all broken apart, you know? Um, and as a background, I had a Leave it to Beaver style uh, beginning of childhood. You know, whether it was fake and an illusion or not, I have to be blessed to say I, I lived in that, that dimension. And now, um, you know, my, my dimension is pretty different, but I have to be brave <laughs> to survive. So uh, I always have to be right up, up front on the front lines of America, on the front lines of society. And um, today is, is a great day again. And for some reason, when everybody else is starting to relax, I feel like can, I can actually go to work. But uh, like on a Monday or Tuesday, when everybody else is getting back into their business, I hide because it, I feel the vibrations of people's anxiety and stress. And, you know, they, they really don't get to take a break. And I feel sorry for a lot of people. You know, not that I, um, not in a degrading way, but as a compassionate, empathetic way to say, you know, so many people have good families and they've started businesses or they've committed to jobs and they've put themselves aside, whether knowing or not, and they just don't get to relax. They don't get to, like, really <sighs> breathe. That's why when I work, I bust my ass, I get dirty, I get cut, I hurt. I spend what I got to complete the mission, you know, just as like a, a Navy SEAL or a ninja would be, you know. I, I Once you're in the ring, you know, two men and a one man leave kind of stuff. That's what happens to me. So uh, I don't appear always to be uh, acceptable to any everybody else. And the images uh, and, that I have... Uh, I have one of a schlep, I have one of a bum, I have one of a rebel, I have one of an antagonist, I have one of an aristocrat, I have one of a, a, a suave, <laughs> you know, I have one of a homeliness, uh, you know, I have one of traditional, I have one of, you know, one that extends and is revolutionary, you know, for our times in a lot of ways, so I, I feel like very attached you know, uh, I, I feel like part of my mind is singing a cappella in a in a on the cotton fields or in a hall stairway. You know, 
and then I feel like part of my mind's just listening and creating music on, on a synth, you know, uh, kind of like the fifth element. Shout out to Bruce Willis. What a great career. What a good dude, you know. And where his mind is at um, is another consideration because, you know, a lot of people that have expanded and opened their minds, a lot of them aren't doing well. Um, James Hetfield, you know, I mean, think about it. You know, hammer time, hammer time. And I think about Chris Cornell, you know, and once you achieve a lot in life, you know, I have suicidal thoughts. Like a couple weeks ago, the image of me putting a gun in my mouth, you know, popped in my head about a thousand times. And it's a third person image. I don't accept it. I don't like it. It makes me mad. And the reason it's there is because of the way society has treated me. You know, like the state's attorney that ran a malicious prosecution against me. If I let it go, I become a victim. So I can't let it go. And I want to prosecute him. You know, before the day I die, you know, unless he dies first, I'll be glad. I'm sorry. But it is what it is. See, I could be mean. I could love. It's your choice. But uh, to have that mentality like Chris Cornell and why he committed suicide, um, I don't, heroin's rough, man. Like, like Kurt Cobain too. Heroin's bad. You know, there's bad substances, you know. Um, but... You get to a point where you've achieved and you've built and you've experienced so much that there really is a redundancy to it. And then you know that you could start over at any time and you could just turn into this person and conjure up these capabilities and build this, this product and this life. But when the outside world doesn't deliver to you, you know, sometimes it just becomes a useless thing and then people don't get to see that. You know, and they don't get to see that you're capable of that. And they judge you for that. Like the video I made about hypergamy last night. You know, so it's like, I understand why people commit suicide. I understand their feelings at the point. And honestly, I think that I've, I've passed them. Because if I can feel honestly what I think they are feeling, um, I, th I think I'm pretty accurate. Um, <laughs> It comes down to love in the end because ever, anything we could do or make with our hands and our and our skills, it doesn't compare to when another person wants to appreciate you by their own free will, just out of natural, circumstantial, love at first sight kind of attraction, you know, and you just know, you know, and it, it becomes a very sad, depressing world. And uh, women have a lot of power and they have a lot of responsibility too that they haven't even be able, they, they're just coming into the light that they do have a responsibility, I think. You know, they didn't stick up for themselves with the transgender shit, which is BS. I mean, come on, man. You mentioned being women's locker rooms. You know, that pisses me off. It's one thing I don't like about the YouTube is within the stream I see stuff that reoccurs and keeps reminding me of shit. But, like, Love is the ultimate power, you know, because if you love yourself, you want to conquer. If you love someone else, you want to you want to have peace. If you love someone else, you want to have peace because you'll allow them to exist in a way that you could love them. And you got to know what that is. You know, you can't just like be tantric. You got to know what tantric is because um, a lot of people are like that, you know. They, they have thrown tantrums in life and now they're tantric. So, you know, they have to have drama and dysfunction and degradation and like masochism in their own lives to feel happy. And a lot of people will accept those things on the, on the basis that they're going to get the love they want because there's, a, there's only a half a person there that's giving that love. And the other pass, half is a masochist. And those people don't own up to it. They don't want to look at it. They want to ignore it. They want to play the victim role. They, they will lie through their whole life and in your face and to themselves saying, oh, it doesn't bother me and that's my past and it doesn't matter and I'm not the same. And it's not true because you got secrets and all this other shit. And there's people like me that are like, okay, well, you know, if you're transparent and honest with me, you know, I will respect that, you know? And um, I think that's what the newer generation is about emotion a lot and they're allowing people to be honest and be open and feel secure with owning feelings 
but there's a defensiveness that comes with it from both sides, past generations and newer generations. You know, there certainly is because there's age discrimination going on. And then when you people that when you have people that are like from past generations that are age discriminatory, like but then they'll go and they'll get a woman that's like, you know, not even a third their age. I don't I'm sorry, but I don't respect that. And I think it's, you know, there's a lot of women that are okay with that. And there's a lot of women that are born into that with that idea because of the, the rules of kings and queens in the past. But it's causing a dysfunction. It's causing a dishevelment in society. And it's not balanced because older women don't embody that same mentality. You know, so they dismiss younger men and they've, you know, whatever. It's just a bunch of bullshit. So... You know, in, a, in the end, I'm on here because it's a lonely world and it's a dysfunctional world and it's become an offensive world where you can't get away from things sometimes, you know, until you create a certain realm for yourself. And that's where God comes in and gives you the, the trials and tribulations because you're strong enough to deal with it. But do you know the difference between your mind and tomorrow, you know, so um, I have a lot of optimism. I think the ultimate thing is, you know, this was only supposed to be like a two minute video, if that, um, but my focus was on the, the, the potential we have as a species and race now more than ever, you know, because we're learning things at a really, really supercharged download rate, you know? Like all the knowledge and functionability we have, they're the same thing as apps. Computers are molded after us. I think the military took like, you know, 230 something PS2s, Playstations, to try and simulate an, a, what a human brain could do. And they hooked them all together and stuff. It's an interesting experiment I only saw a little bit on. But yeah, so um, if you have been diagnosed with anything of a mental disorder, just know that uh, you're not alone, first off, and there are people that haven't been diagnosed that, that are functioning in life that people would diagnose as the same and think that you can't function, and um, I think we're going to do all right. I think everybody's going to do all right, except for the selfish people who refuse to change. And, uh, you know, uh, my, my artwork is never finished. I never want to be a hypocrite, and I know that's a lot of my words can be. But, like, because my artwork is never finished, I know I could accept change because I could always see something I could do a little better or something I could change, or something I could add, or something I could cover up. But that's artwork. It's not real life. Um, but at the same token, you got to start somewhere. So peace and happiness. And if you're thinking about suicide, know that you can get past it. But if you're on heroin, more likely than if you're on heroin and coke and pills, you're.